another quick thing that I'd like to demonstrate is in the same project, because um, I did a little bit of tweaking to the, uh, the design. So in here, uh, let me actually just turn off this uh, module first, because then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So these fields in the module or in the um, radio buttons, the top one is a date. So it's kind of nice and small. It has the, the date picker here and this kind of thing. The rest of these, uh, especially the year, is a text box. So you see here that the text box is huge. Um, and if I do the month and the year, you have this little one for the month and then this long one for the, the year and same thing here. So, and I'd put this on the left because if I put it on the right, um, let me open this up again. So if I set the, depending on how your, how your forms are styled, if you do the right vertical, and then we'll refresh this. Uh, you can see here now, if I select this, it stacks, doesn't look really, doesn't look that nice. Um, so using the CSS injector, uh, I'm able to um, shrink the width of these boxes here. So um, the first thing that we have to do and is, is go into the inspect tab. I always use the inspect tab because I need to figure out what class or ID, um, what name this, this input has. So if I just right click here and go to inspect, and let me bring my other window in here. So you can see here when I hover over this highlighted box, it's giving me the input here. And you can see here that there's a max width and then there's a width that's being assigned by red cap. So if I go to, um, if I click on this input, if I type width, and let's say I want to do uh, 50 pixels, right? If I just type width 50 pixels and I hit enter, you can see here that this crosses out and this rule gets applied. This is being, because it's being overridden by red cap. So it's not changing anything here. So what I have to do is I have to click in here and I have to overwrite, override red caps CSS. And the way to do that is, is putting this rule at the top. So cascading style sheets is exactly what that means. It cascades. So rules, um, other rules can, can override other rules. And the way to override everything and just say this is the most important thing is by literally putting important uh, here. So you can see as soon as I put that in, this box got smaller. Um, so what I like to do is go into the inspect tab because it allows me to, to target this specifically and I can see down here at the bottom the exact um, hierarchy of information, where to find this field. So I need this information here because this is the ID, this label uh, date type two right here, because I want to target that specific uh, input. So it's the input that is in this label date type two. And that's that you can find here. Uh, let's see. So I got to go span. Span, span, label. So right here is where this ID is coming from. And that's the information I need. So when I create the rule, and let me open this up. So when I create the rule, um, this is what I'm setting up. So I need the ID, label date, type dash two dot MC and then input because I'm targeting the input of that label. Uh, and as you can see here, because I don't need label one because that's the date field. So I just need to mess with uh, number two if the second option is chosen, the third option or the fourth option. So what I'm doing is I'm applying this, this rule to all three of these inputs. And you can have multiple inputs in a declaration here by just having a, a comma, comma separating them, each one of them. So by setting this width as 100 pixels, and if we want to do 50, if we're going to do the uh, right-oriented one of 50,
So if we want to do the, the right oriented one of 50 here, um, the first thing we're going to do is go back into our project and I'll just do it in this tab. We'll go to manage the external modules. And now that I've disabled this module, I need to re-enable it. So I'll click enable. And once this loads, we'll type CSS and it'll pop up here. We click enable. And then we just click configure. And it's going to pull up all my stuff that I had before, but you want to make sure it's enabled. And then you can also apply uh, the CSS rules for survey pages or data entry pages or both or all. So just depending on what you want here, I don't really need it for surveys because I don't have a survey. I just want it for data entry. And then I can just, I can really narrow it down to where it only applies to this instrument. So if you have a, a project with a lot of instruments and you don't want it to mess with any of the other ones, um, if it's something that's specific for this one, you could select the, the individual um, instrument. If you have multiple styles, so for example, one instrument, you're applying these because these are the fields on that instrument and then you have some other styling for another instrument, you could just select the plus sign here and do the same thing down here for the other instrument that you have the separate styles for. So I'm just gonna go in here and paste our new rule and then we'll refresh this. And now it's 50 pixels here, this is 50 pixels here, and this is 50 pixels here. Um, and the reason we have, the nice thing about doing this in the inspect tab is that you can see what styles, um, how which, which uh, elements you need to affect and add styles to, but you can also test widths. So like maybe 50 was you know too small or 75 was too big, you really kind of dial it in. But you have to remember that any changes you make in this um, inspect tab are only temporary. As soon as you reload the page, those changes go away. So the other thing that I had made a change for was um, I added some padding to the left of the uh, boxes. So if we go, let me just change this to, Oh, actually, it's not um, it's not on there, so that's perfect because you can see here that uh, the field when it pops up, it's really right up against the uh, the end of the label here, and I wanted to give some space. Um, so let me just go ahead and move this back over to the right, or sorry, to the left. So to add some spacing, I needed to know, because uh, I was targeting the, the input box here first. And now what I need to do is I need to figure out where um, this spacing needs to occur. Because I can't put spacing on the input box uh, and this span is kind of nested. So really I have to go to this. So I have to go to this span because this, I can't just say, um, so like we click on this here, you'll see in the bottom that we have label, uh, one, and then we have span and then we have span. So I can't do a, a rule that just says, uh, with the idea of label, label date type one dash one span the way I did with the input, because what that's going to do is that's going to target the outer span and I want to target the inner span. So what I have to do is say label date type one span span because that shows that it's gonna it's it's the hierarchy of the um elements so you can see here i have the date type one span span two three and four because i want to affect all four of them and i'm just adding padding to the left of that uh by one m so if we go back to the uh, css injector here and you just, uh, you can just paste it down at the bottom here and save it. So you can, and, and now you'll see here that I haven't reloaded it yet. So you can see that it still has the, uh, the uh, scrunched spacing. And now when I add it, refresh, um, now there's some room here. So each box has its own space and there's space between each of these boxes. Um, so that's just kind of a quick way to 
style some uh, embedded fields here. So that way, instead of having each one of these pop up down here as separate fields, um, you can have them pop up in line and you can mess with these, uh, the display of these values uh, using the CSS injector. So Nick asks, what happens when a user's screen size varies? So um, nothing really should happen. It, it might be that um, they, so like if we, if I scrunch this up really far, then it would probably uh, wrap. If red cap would go that low, uh, let me see if I zoom in, there you go. So you see that it'll wrap. Um, but you'd have to have a really scrunched screen size. Uh, and then you could also, you could change these. Um, some of these here, you could, instead of uh, using pixels and Ms, there's uh, rems, which are relative. And there, there's you'd have to look into the CSS uh, size values because there's a bunch of them. And some of them are dynamic that you can do like percentages and they will they will resize as the screen resizes. And then the RAM, because the M takes is basically one M is the height of the uh, standard font size. So usually it's like 12 or 16 points. So one M would be 16 points and RAM is a relative M and that uses a different calculation and it'll, it'll change dynamically. Um, but they should be fine until you get to uh, like a really big size. And if you did want these to, you could also put some HTML in or some styling to where these just wrap automatically. So if you if you check this, and even though you have a lot of space here, if you wanted it to pop up underneath, you could add some CSS styling that would do that. Um, but really it, for me, this the idea was just to not have this large text box for the tiny, because I know um, when I set this, uh, value for the year, one of the things I didn't mention earlier is that I put in some min and max values because I want them to be able to enter, they're forced to enter the 40, four digit year because I have a value of 1900 in here. So if I put like just 24 for 2024, it's, it's not going to let me put that in. So it has to be at least 1900. Um, and so they would have to enter, you know, a valid date. But I didn't want to have all this field, this, you know, real estate over here that was just being blank for a four digit date. Um, so does any, anybody have any questions about that or need me to go over anything?